Hello students, welcome to Short Obsessed Classes. So in today's video, we'll solve a question of four questions from MA Economics 2012 entrance exam of Hyderabad Central University. So in today's lecture, we'll be solving question number four, five, six, seven from section A. So from section A, we'll solve question number four, five, six, seven. So first, I'll start with question number four. So in question number four, it is given according to crowding out hypothesis in public finance. There are four options given. So here public investment is complementary to private investment. So public investment is complementary to private investment. Now second guess public investment is supplementary to private investment. Third one is public investment displaces private investment. And the fourth one is public investment encourages private investment. So, according to crowding out hypothesis, the crowding out hypothesis in public finance, we would say question number C that is Due to public investment, it deplaces the private investment. So question number C for, no, for sorry, option C for question number four is the right one. So I hope you guys have got it. So I'll now I'll go to the next question, which is question number five. Before I move on to the question number five, I want you to go for this question couple of seconds before we proceed further with the question number five. Hello students, so now we will go to the question number 5. So in question number 5 it is given, a function is given like this and the value of the second order derivative with respect to x when x equals to 9 is equals to 4 options are given. So first we will write down the function. So first for this we have to write down the function. Now, after writing the function, it is asked that they have asked the value of the second order derivative with respect to x. So, we have to differentiate this function with respect to x and we need not only differentiate it one time, that is, we need not only get the first order differentiation, but also another time with respect to x. So, we get the second order differentiation. So, first we will write down, we will differentiate it once then we will find the first order differentiation of this. Now the first order differentiation of this will be equals to minus 14 x 2 come here 2 into 7 becomes 14 and x 2 minus 1 becomes x plus if this x from this x we get 126. So after first order differentiation we get the value of f dash x that is this is a 4 c that is first order condition or first order differentiation. Now after second order differentiation we will get if you differentiate this f x with respect to x again there is only x here so we will get the value to be equals to 14. Now when the value of x is equals to 9 when value of x is equals to 9 as there is no x term here, so you would say it will remain minus 14. So here option D is the right answer. That is for question number 5, option D is the right answer. I want you to go through this question again. We have just written down the function first, then we have differentiated it twice and we have got the value to be 14. Suppose the, if we have got the value of this to be 14 x, then we have to put the value of x which is given 9 here. As there is no x term here, we simply leave it here and we will conclude that the option D which says minus 14 is the right answer. So I want you to go through this couple of seconds before we proceed further with the question number 6.
so i'm expecting you guys have gone through this question now we'll come to the question number six so now for question number five the right answer was d now we'll come to the question number six so in question number six it is given which of the following statements is true in the context of correlation analysis so there are four options given correlation measures the degree of linear association between two variables so de correlation means degree of linear association that is the linear association between x and y does collinearity mean the linear that is x determines y does it the case and the second option is there is no distinction between variables and dependent and explanatory variables that is there is no distinction which one is explanatory variable that is which one determines the other one and the fourth one third option is given by both variables are assumed to be random variables so are both variables are random variables and the fourth is option this is all of them above are true so now we'll say what is correlation coefficient say for an example say you are measuring wage that is how much you are going to earn basically depends on alpha is an autonomous term plus beta into your education so your wage how much you are going to earn depends on education so they both are random variable that is your education can change at the same time your wage can also change so this is why we say they are varying in nature that is they are randomly can vary so we would conclude they are random variables now from there we can say the first option correlation measures the degree of linear association between two variables that is how education determines wage linear because it determines it in a linear way that is if it change by one unit it will also change by either 0 to 1 that is the value of this will be between 0 to 1 that is there will be a linear relationship between education to wage wage cannot determine education only education can determine wage so this says a linear that is a one-sided cause and effect relationship so now in the second option is given there is no distinction between variables as dependent and explanatory variables so anything you can take it here like y or x so they both can be like this both variables are assumed to be random variables they both are varying nature so we say random variables so all of them above are true so option d is the right answer for question number six so for question number six option d is the right answer i want i want you to go through this question for a couple of seconds before we move on to the op question number seven So I'm expecting you guys have gone through it once. So now I'll come to the last question of this video, which is the find the value added method of estimating GDP excludes. There are four options given. So final value of final goods, value of capital goods, value of intermediate goods, and value of basic goods. So it is quite evident that GDP is equals to value of final goods minus value of intermediate goods so value of gdp is given by value of final goods and value of intermediate goods so we can conclude that option c is the right answer this is eliminate as we are subtracting it it eliminates the value of intermediate goods so for question number seven value added method of estimating gdp exclude what value of intermediate goods so in today's lecture so we solve
question number four five six seven so for question number four the right answer was c for question number five it was d for question number six it was d for seven it is c so in today's video we solved four questions from hyderabad university we solve four questions from hyderabad university we, we are solving questions from section a now so in the subsequent videos we'll solve other question from ma economics 2012 paper from hyderabad central university keep watching the video if you have any query or doubt i'll be giving you my number which is 9836793076 you can simply whatsapp me on this number you can also go to our website which is www.showropsers classes.com there you will find a lot of other videos like this and you will also get to see a lot of other materials which are needed to crack ma economics exam of hyderabad central university so thank you for watching this video have a nice day ahead